the matter with Champ? He was trembling all over. Oh, all right, yes. Look at the barn. <laughs> Look at that guy run. Why don't you shoot it? Sure. That ought to scare him. Come but on, let's David. Go Come on. Where are you? Mr. Norton, what is the matter? You shot someone? Sure, a burglar. You shot him? Not unless he was flying a shot in the air. No, I just tried to frighten him, Bertha. I guess he's still running. Didn't you hear anything, Fritz? The shot. Yes. But before the dog barking? No. Here, put this back in my car away, Fritz. Yes, Mr. Norton. Good night, Bertha. Come on, little love. What's it look like? 
You know, that little flat piece of metal I scrape my pipe with. Like a sort of little cat opener? Yes, where is it? I don't see it. I gotta finish my letter to the bank. Don't see my needles. Oh, what did you say? Nothing. Oh, what about my train, David? You are watching the time? You're all right. This wonderful bank has made a mistake again. Banks don't make mistakes. They can't make mistakes. Well, go ahead, take their part against your wife. And why can't they, I'd like to know, are they Roosevelt or somebody? Roosevelt, darling. W, O. Oh. No, O. I think you're wrong, Mother. Oh. Banks don't make mistakes because they use adding machines. Well, what does that prove? We use a washing machine and look at your shirt last week. Oh, you talked to her, Mother. You gave birth to her. You married her. She's yours now. A mistake of $102.02. Their favor. Naturally, their favor, it's a racket. If there's so much as a single penny out of the way, they stay up all night to find the error. Then they do make errors. They do not. Then why do they stay up all night? Claudia, I'm reading. You are not. I am. I don't call going over the stock market reading. Oh, what should I do about those foreign bonds of mine, David? Forget them. But I might need a little cash, though. I wish you'd tell me what to sell. Don't you let David advise you. He should stick to being an architect. The minute he sells something goes up, and the minute he buys something goes down. Take the pencil out of your mouth, Claudia, and speak plainly. And then he buys some more because it's cheap and it goes down further. That's what he's doing now, kicking himself. I know the look. How would you like a good bat in the nose? This is no market to sell in, Mother. We'll lend you some money. What do you want money for, anyway? Aha. Uh -huh. Here, let me measure this, Leaf. In a minute. How does this sound for a letter? United Banks of America, my dear gentleman. No, just gentlemen. Or just my dear. What are you writing the bank for anyway? What? Telling them to credit my account with $102.02. I need it like anything. Oh, let me see that. What's that figure, a three or a five? Three. Oh, it's a three, is it? Grain company, $55. There's $2 accounted for now. Costs more to feed Majesty than it costs to feed us. Well, she gives you butter and cream and milk, doesn't she? Well, she didn't for a long time, and she kept on eating just the same. Oh, I don't grudge it to the poor thing, but I mean, after all, she was definitely loafing. She wasn't definitely loafing. She was dry. Besides, this feed bill includes the chickens and pigs. You could buy an awful lot of milk and eggs and bacon for $55. You can get positively bilious for $55. Oh, keep quiet. Well, please remember, it wasn't a mistake in addition. It was a mistake in reading. In adding and subtracting, I'm perfect. Oh, you're perfect, are you? Huh? What's 9 from 13? Where? Right there. 9 from 13 is 6. What do you think it is? Never mind what I think. Count it out on your fingers. Go on. 4. And I slaved all my life to send her to school. 9 from 13 is 4 and borrow one. Here, you forgot to borrow one. Oh, no, you didn't either. I never forget to borrow one. I should think that bank would be so red in the face. A bank doesn't have to get red in the face. A bank doesn't make mistakes. What's that? G-R-B-L, two exclamation points, question mark, hyphen. G-R-B-L, G-R-B-L. My gray blouse. What's your gray blouse doing in your checkbook? I have to remind me to call the dry cleaners. Any objections? Hmm. What are they cooking? Ooh, it smells good. Bread. Bertha makes our bread. She's out of a museum, that woman. They must have had wonderful references from their last place. They didn't have any. They didn't? But isn't it dangerous to take people off the street? We didn't. We took them out of the paper. We advertised in the Connecticut paper, and they were our only answer. Well, you know what you're doing. I wonder if Bertha found my pipe scraper. I wish you'd stop talking about that pipe scraper. I will not. Well, I am going upstairs to change my blouse. But before I go, I just want to say that it's sad for two grown people to behave like such imbeciles. I inherit my end from you. Ha, ha, ha. Stop heckling the poor woman. David, I don't think she looks awfully well, do you? No wonder with you for a daughter. No, I mean it. Why, well, I she looked fine, dear. Really, did you? Can't you make her stay? My mother doesn't need me to tell her I like having her here. I know, you're awfully sweet to her, and I adore you for it. I bet you that's one reason you married me, because I'm good to your mother. It was, that in the back of your neck. David, I'm not going to the station with you. Why? Because she won't tell me why she's going in, but I have an idea she might tell you. I think I'll see if Bertha found my pipe scraper. <laughs> Bertha, have you seen my pipe? Yeah, what's the matter? It was Carl. Who's Carl? <laughs> I'll get it. 
Hello? Oh, yeah, Raj. Tomorrow? What time? Well, I had a kind of a lunch date here, but I'd just soon miss it anyway. What is it, the Abercrombie estate? All right, yeah. The money for the eggs. The money for the eggs? Yeah. You see, it's not here. They should be $9.25, but it's not here. Oh, I see. But it, it should be there. We are responsible. Yeah, we make it good, Mr. Norton. You take it from our wages. Why? Oh, I, I, I took that. You, Mr. Norton? Sure. You took it? <gasps> I needed oh. some change. Oh, I'm sorry, Bertha. I should have told <laughs> Oh, that's all right now. Better, Bertha. Yeah, come on, get ready. Hey, don't push me around. What do you think I am, a sack of something? Oh, don't do that. What was Bertha crying about? I don't know. What do women cry about? Roger has his nerve. Why? I know it was Roger on the telephone, and I know you made an appointment with him to look over the Abercrombie estate tomorrow and leave me here alone with Julian Derushka. How do you know that? I just happened to pick up the telephone. Oh, you just happened to pick up the telephone. Listening in again, huh? Can a man have any privacy? What fun is privacy? Oh, God, I'll hit you. Now, tell me, what was Bertha crying about? Nothing. Anyway, I heard the whole thing. You what? A woman has a right to know what's going on in her own home. I listened through a door. Oh, you did? Then you did take the money. I did not. Then why did you say you did? Oh, they look kind of worried. Oh, my... David, you're wonderful. Oh. Yes, you are. You're wonderful. All right, I'm wonderful. Don't you think I'm wonderful, too, for understanding? Yes, you're wonderful, too, for understanding. You know what I think, David? I never know what you think. I think we have two very beautiful souls. Mm-hmm. Or maybe we're just trying to hang on to a good couple. Maybe. <laughs> I told you not to do that. Well, don't get so cross about it. I'm not. I wish you'd tell me where you put my pipe scraper. I didn't take it, so how could I put it any place? You're a kleptomaniac. A what? Well, why did you marry me if I'm not attractive? Because you have a very nice spirit. Claudia! Is that good, eh? He says I have no appeal. Well, he ought to know. That's not us. That's ring three. Isn't it time to leave yet, David? Not yet. Shh. Hang up. Oh, Claudia, you're disgraceful. Shh. Hang up. Mm, it's gorgeous. Oh, don't look so holy, you two. It's my only vice. Listening over the phone is as dishonest as cheating. What was so gorgeous you were hearing? Someday you'll listen in once too often, and you'll hear something you wish you hadn't heard. Who is ring three? And suppose I don't tell you. All right, don't. All right, I will. Somebody knew. The butcher told me. He's a writer, a playwright, and he rented... David, you know the little brown house up the river road? What did he say that was so funny? Oh, frightfully English voice. He was screaming something about rehearsals and uh, taking the jolly old train back into town, don't you know? <laughs> That'll be your train, Mother. Oh, good. Oh, how will I know him? By his English voice. Suppose he doesn't speak. Oh, yeah, but what about that train? Oh, you've lots of time, Mother. Oh, I forgot. I want Bertha to wrap up some homemade bread for you to take home. You see? How do you stand up? Well, sometimes I have to hang out with my teeth to keep up. Yes, I know that feeling. <laughs> Look here. Why the heck are you going back to town before the weekend? Why the heck not? I have a home, too. Claudia seems to think you're hiding something from her. She doesn't. So she's right. Oh, David. Claudia's worse than a detective. I never have been able to fool her. Well, she certainly has herself an overdose of mother image. Yes, I wish she hadn't. I wish she hadn't, too. That's why I'm so glad about your buying this house. The only thing she doesn't like about it is leaving you in New York. That's the best thing that could have happened to all three of us. You certainly know what it's all about, don't you? That funny little head of yours. Claudia has to learn to let go of people she loves. To hold close with open hands. That's well, a big order. She'll learn. <laughs> She'll grow up. David. Yes, dear. You've been so fine. I know it hasn't all been a bed of roses for you. I think you must love her very, very much. I do. But we started to talk about you, not us. Why are you going back into town? Well... What? We have been talking about it, more or less. That's what I thought. Anything wrong, Mother? Where is she? Oh, she's up to her ears in bread and jam. We can talk better on the porch. Come on. Take a 
first thing in the morning. X-ray? Mm-hmm. Well, tomorrow's Sunday. Yes, I know. I went to the specialist for consultation this morning, and he wanted pictures taken immediately. He was leaving for Baltimore. He could only give me a few moments. He's coming back to be there in the morning. Uh, he wants the X-rays taken in the hospital. Apparently, he didn't want to lose another day. Does he seem to think it's that serious? Well, he didn't say, David, but he's wasting no time. How long has this been going on? Well, that's just it. As he said, perhaps a little too long. But I know more about it tomorrow. I'll go in with you. You'll do nothing of the kind. Oh, but that's a heck of a thing to keep to yourself. I guess you didn't want to worry, Claudia. No, I didn't want her on my trail, either. It's funny about you two. You're so close, and yet you never have a decent word for each other. Well, that's our system. I wouldn't have come down here today if I hadn't promised. I've been racking my brains what to tell her about my going back tonight. Well, you're one person who can never lie to her and get away with it. I know. We're a little too close for fibs. Well, um, who's the doctor? Ellery Mason. So that's why you want to sell some bonds. It means an operation. If I'm lucky. Oh, no. There's no use for us to fool each other, David. Now, don't tell Claudia yet. Hey, where are you? Shh. Where are they? Have you seen the purple? Well, what would I be doing here if I weren't? 
I haven't the vaguest notion. I thought you were your daughter. Now who's whimsical? I'm just confused. Why? Oh, I don't know. Just because it's all so confusing, I suppose. <laughs> I don't think so. Well, tell me, how long have you been married? Ages, almost a year. Almost a year. And uh, do you live here all the year round? Oh, yes, we just bought this place. We farm it. As a hobby? I should say not. My husband puts his whole heart and soul in it. Look. Oh, it's a decoy. Don't be silly, it's an egg. <sighs> it would discourage me enormously if I were a hen. There's your poor train. Drink your milk, it'll do you good. I don't want to be done good to. You're one of these domestic women, aren't you? Well, why not? No man should housekeep for himself. And how do you know I do housekeep for myself? Oh, I know all about you. How? Well, in the first place, your name is Seymour, Jerry Seymour. Well, how do you know that? I'm a listener. A what? A listener. We're on the same party wire. I listen. And you admit it? Well, I'm not proud of it. I try to overcome it. I've never listened on a party wire in my life. My husband's the same way. He sounds very well behaved in every respect. Oh, no, it's just that he can't stand little crimes. You know, like reading a newspaper over somebody else's shoulder. Or um, taking a spoon out of a hotel. But give him an out-and-out -out scoundrel and he takes his hat off to Then him. I'm his man. I haven't a scruple. I thought you said you'd never listened over a party wire in your life. I never have. This is my first acquaintance with a party wire. But I must confess that I do read other people's letters and I enjoy them immensely. And I've no hesitancy when it comes to other men's wives. Not any? Not any. The car is ready now. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. It was nothing. I was happy to do it. Is he always so reserved? Oh, he suffered a lot in his life. Wasting good milk, that wasn't very nice. Oh, I know it wasn't. I'm not a very nice person. At least, I haven't been up till now. Oh, getting dark. Mm. Here we go. Oh, don't bother. Thank you. Thank you, Fritz. I say, surely you feel more than pity for him. Fritz? Oh, yes, I'm crazy about him. Oh, I see. Of course, every fly has its ointment. And every silver lining has its cloud. Well, nothing is perfect, I don't suppose. Nothing. And uh, forget what I said about other men's wives. It doesn't go here. Why doesn't it? Well, let's say it's because your husband was good enough to fix that tire for me. Goodbye. Anything else I can do for you, Mrs. Norton? No, thank you, Fritz. You've done enough already.
He ran the, his car into the wall and had a flat tire, and Fritz fixed it for him. Why didn't he fix it himself? He's not the type to carry a jack. Uh -huh. Well, what type is he? It's not only English, he's British. I don't like him. Mmm, he was lovely about it when I told him I listened on the telephone. He said he had no scruples either. He sounds like a first-class dope to me. Hey, you're sitting on my paper here. You're jealous. Who, me? No. I just don't want him hanging around here using Fritz, that's all. Using Fritz? So that's your worry. I wish I could make you eat those words. I wish I could make you so jealous you'd want to kill him. With my bare hands? insulted me the way he insulted you, I wouldn't sit there grinning about it. How did he insult me? First he said, I enjoy reading other people's letters, and I have no hesitancy when it comes to other men's wives. Oh, he did, huh? Oh, you don't have to get all blown up about it, and the next breath he said it didn't apply in my case and marched himself off. Well, dear old Jerry has more sense than I gave him credit for. But doesn't it occur to you that if I'm good enough for you to be in love with, I'm good enough for other men to be in love with? Not necessarily. I'm just easy to please, that's all. You say yourself you're not beautiful. Heaven knows you're not bright. You have little or no feminine appeal. And yet, I'm just a simple fellow. You're all the woman I want. But if nobody else wants me, how long will you want me? That's how long? That's us. I hope there's nothing wrong. What are you scared about? Well, who would be calling us? I know what's going on in your head. You think your mother's been in a railroad accident or something. Now listen, darling, when are you gonna grow up and stop being a mama girl? Stop that. It's Bertha. Was well, she answering? Yes. Well, hang up then. She seems awfully upset. Oh, stop worrying. Come out of the way, will you? Uh, what? You didn't find my pipe scraper while I was gone, did you? If you mention that pipe scraper again, I'll scream. Are they so expensive? That one cost me a quarter. A quarter, and you make my life miserable for a quarter. I'll buy you a new one. I don't want a new one. I want that one. I've had it for years. Gotta find out what that bank did with my checking account. Oh, you probably forgot to enter something. Oh, no, I couldn't have. Well, then find it, my love. Don't my love me. It must be here. David, I've got to have more money to get through the month. Ouch. Are we strapped again? Did you ever hear the word depression? Yes, but we weren't married, so it didn't depress me. David, sometimes I don't think you realize how much we spend on the place. What are you talking about? I know the last penny what we spend on the place. Our total investment to date is exactly... Don't tell me, don't tell me. Let me guess. All right, guess. At least, but at least 30,000. Well, where would I get 30,000? Dad only left me 20. Oh, I thought people always spent more. <clears throat> oh, what? Nothing, skip it. We spent $18,000 on the place, including the furniture. Is that all? I'd give you 30 this minute. It's a deal. You still didn't tell me about the extra 2,000 we didn't spend. Well, we're not through yet. There's a lot of work to be done on the chicken runs, and it costs so much an acre to reclaim the land. You, you see, could... that's just what I mean. A person could live at the Waldorf for what it costs to run a simple little farm. Who wants to live at the Waldorf? Nobody. But if you're poor, you'd have to put up with some discomforts. Claudia. What? Answer me something truthfully. Do I ever lie to you? Not with your lips, you don't. Well, what then? Are you completely happy here? Yes, only sometimes I worry. Sometimes I wish that... If Mother lived here, too. That would make everything perfect, wouldn't it? Oh, I'm not asking for it, David. I, I realize perfectly well how unfair it'd be to you. Unfair to you, too, darling. Yes, I know it's not good. Someday when I'm an old woman, I'll develop a twitch in one eye, and you'll hike me off to the doctors, and he'll say it's because I had an attachment to my mother. I know. Life does become complicated the minute you're born, doesn't it? An egg doesn't know how lucky it is. 
But an egg misses an awful lot of fun. That's right. An egg doesn't have you. An egg can't snuggle up to you, can it? You're a nice girl. I like you. That's not very exciting. Just to like me. Don't you believe it? When you like the person you love, that's marriage. And it's exciting. Place he loves it. 
But what would we do? Where would we go? When you get almost 100% profit in less than six months, you don't ask so many questions. Almost 100% profit is quite good, isn't it? Listen, everybody, listen, everybody. I have been a fool not to buy a farm on the country before. What a kitchen. What a garden. It is mine. And my lawyer is going to see your husband on Monday. Julia, please, the cigarette, my voice. All right. And now that you've brought everything in sight, Daruska, can we get started? No, 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 no. I want to stay a little while. I want to get acquainted with my house. Oh, boy. I never owned so many books in my life. You have a concert tonight. Concert? Who cares about the concert? Well, you might remember I have some plans of my own. Let him wait. It's good for him. Let her wait. Nobody, Claudia. Oh, here's your bag. Well, aren't you going to try on these things? Oh, I'm aching to. Julia, I simply adore the negligee. It's beautiful. And the perfume's wonderful. Thanks, loads. Glad you're not proud. Mm, I don't mind hand-me-downs. You are not chic. What? What do you need this allure? Allure? Yes, I think so, too. David does, too, I think. Straight up and down like a little stick? <laughs> Married woman. What do you need this shape? Shape? Shape. She's right, Julia. I've always longed for a shape. Well, I think that negligee will give you some potentiality. I don't know of anyone who has a peel without it. And don't forget the perfumes. Oh. What is it, potentiality without smell? Is there a thing with swallowsami? What's she saying? Do something nice with your hair. Thank you. Welcome. I wish you'd be a little more discreet about my trip. Ah, oh, you're too old-fashioned. You should shout it from the house. Well, not this house, Tom. Chloe is in love with her husband. She doesn't know other men exist. Poor child. Just the same. It's pretty sweet while it lasts. But it doesn't last. It lasted with Hartley and me for ten years. You know what's the matter with you? You're still in love with your husband. I don't know. Is it too much? 
From the little I know of Mr. Seymour, it could never be too much. Oh, <coughs> Please put that cigarette away. I should be delighted. Hello. Why, hello there. I didn't expect you. Oh, she didn't expect you. It is perfectly obvious. We stay to know. Say, what is all this? Innocent. Shape or no shape. You have done circles around us. Come now, confess. I wonder if you'd see if our chauffeur is there. Oh, certainly. Thank you. What's the matter with you two? Oh, she asked, what's the matter with us two? He doesn't like very good plays, but uh, he is attractive in a way. I don't even know him. He was here last night. I heard it with my own ears. Yes, he had a flat tire. Flat tire? Flat tire! It's true. No, 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 no. You are too clever to expect me to swallow that. You're on the wrong track. No. Dorothy is not built for intrigue. You see, Julie doesn't think I'm capable of intrigue. Why should you? Why shouldn't she? Ladies, the car awaits. Little fox. Oh, you don't like that I call her little fox. On the contrary, I love that you call her little fox. Come on, Daruska. Don't come out, darling. You've nothing on. You'll get cold. Don't be silly. She's not cold, the little fox. Somebody should have warned me about her before I bought her house. Yeah, and somebody should have warned me, too. Oh, I shall be your neighbor, you know. Are you pleased? Enchanted. Goodbye. Sorry. Bye. Bye. Sorry, we have to go. And don't forget, the farm is mine. Drishka's quite a character if you can live through it. Yes, and you're quite a character yourself. Why did you make a monkey out of me last night? I made a monkey out of you? You told me you were married to Fritz. I didn't say any such thing. Well, you looked as if you were married to him. He didn't have his white coat on and you wore... I was wearing my good white linen. Well, he gave me the impression... That was merely the other side of my potentiality. I see. And is this the other side of your potentiality? In a way, I suppose so. Good afternoon. I've been robbed. Robbed? How? Just robbed. Speaking of your potentialities, I must say this is by far the more enchanting side of the two. Really? Yes. It smells like all the flowers in the universe. Hey, don't do that. Why not? I don't like it. You're tantalizing. Tantalizing? Yes, and desirable, utterly desirable. And just what? Just what you think it means. Oh. May I come out now, please? I don't understand you. No, I don't understand myself. I don't understand anything. And, uh... And what? I don't want a glass of milk. What made you think I was going to ask you that? You have that look. Are you sure you don't want some? I've never been sure of anything in my life. I've got an idea. My car's outside. Pop upstairs and put something on and we'll go for a drive. In the middle of the afternoon? What better time? Oh. David will be home any minute, but we can all three go for a ride some evening. Oh, that'll be jolly. Oh, your forehead's perspiring. I'm not at all surprised. You know, I'm almost tempted to go for that ride. It might do David good to come home and find me gone. Is he the jealous type? Oh, I wish he were. Oh. So he's not in love with you? He is, but differently. He likes my spirit. He thinks I haven't any glamour. No glamour? You? Well, you're not going to sit there and tell me truthfully I have appeal. I certainly am not. No? I'm not going to sit here one moment longer and tell you anything. That's funny business. Don't be angry. I'm not. Would you mind doing it again, please? Why? Because the most wonderful feeling shot clear through me. You uninhibited, darling. Not too much of a one, please. You'll take what you get and like hey, it. Wait a minute. I don't wait for anything. Don't be silly. I have to say hello to David. Hello, dear. This is my husband. This is Mr. 
Oh, I've forgotten your last name. Uh, Seymour. Uh, Gerald Rodney Seymour. How do you do? This is Mr. Seymour. Why, David, you're white as a ghost. Is anything wrong? Get out. I won't get out. Why should I? Get out. I say, hold on a moment. There's another side to this David, story. David, for heaven's sake, stop wiggling your nostrils like that. You look silly. Do you want to go by yourself or do you want me to carry you? Please. I'll give you just five seconds to get upstairs and take off that masquerade costume. How dare you talk to me like that? In front of a perfect stranger, too. I'll never forgive you until you beg my pardon. Incredible. You come in and find her in the arms of another man and you should beg her pardon? Look here, are you going to do it? I might when I get to the bottom of this. That's love. No, you don't have to throw me out. I'm going. Not so quick. Oh, now, wait a minute. I don't blame you for wanting to take a crack at me, but in the name of justice, you must listen to my side. After all, actually, I should take a crack at you. You shouldn't let her loose without a keeper. Why, she's a menace to a man's sanity. I don't think she even knows what it's all about. She doesn't. If you weren't such a heel, you'd have realized it. Well, how was I to know? She acts like she does. She talks like she does. She led me a terrific dance. I... I'm shot. I know that feeling. Believe me, I've, I've never been nearer to mopping my forehead in my whole life. By Jove, I'm going to do it. I'll put it over there. I brought two glasses. You want a drink? Do you really mean it? understand me, but, um, are you sure she doesn't know what it's all about? Why? Oh, uh, for no particular reason, except that she, well, she seemed to like it, and she asked me to kiss her again, and she's such a sweet kid, I thought you ought to know. Thanks. Well, perhaps it was none of my business. It wasn't. But thanks anyway. Oh, not at all. See with the drink? Oh, yes, thanks most awfully. Well, I think perhaps I'd better be trotting along. Might be a good idea. Oh, really, I feel most awfully rotten about all this. Uh, please forget what I said, will you? But I just thought you ought to know anything there was to know, and because, well, you've been really so frightfully decent about all well, this. Well, why don't you two kiss each other? I might do worse, and so might you, young lady. I resent that remark, and I don't like being called young lady in that tone of voice. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for a lot of things. Please forgive me, both of you. Oh, one more thing. What? Oh, please don't bother. Um... As I was about to say, your good white linen, please have it copied in many shades. It's by far the more accurate side of your potentiality. Goodbye, old man. You poisoned his mind against me. Everything was going beautifully until you spoiled it all. What was going beautifully? Don't touch me. I'm terribly hurt at the way you've acted. How do you think I feel? I didn't say one single nasty word to you. Why did you let him kiss you? I didn't let him. He did it of his own accord. Hard as that may be for you to understand. It isn't hard for me to understand. Honestly, isn't it? No. Young, you're lovely. Well, why didn't you ever tell me that before? Was it necessary? Yes, it was. Well, maybe you're right does things for you when a man thinks you're desirable. Is that what he called you? You're jealous. Well, what do you expect me to be? Well, then, why on earth didn't you do something about it? Knock him down, at least. Listen to me, Claudia.
This is no game. Don't you know you could have smashed something very fine and beautiful between us? Smashed it? Why, I built it up. I only did it for your sake. I think you really believe that. But it's no fun to be in love with a woman that no other man would give house room to. Oh, David, you should have seen me. Once I got going, I simply sizzled. Well, suppose you tell me about it. Did you like it when he kissed you? The most wonderful feeling shot clear through me from my eyebrows to my toes. And then what do you think happened? I don't know. Instead of the feeling going to Jerry, shot right back to you. You don't get it. No, I don't get it. But it's perfectly clear. Kissing Jerry made me more in love with you. That's why I asked him to kiss me again, to make sure. Oh. I was crazy about you. Can't you understand the way it worked? I must have hurt you this afternoon, David. Can we both be hurt a little before we finish? I'll be hurt more because I'm so possessive. You might as well know it, David. I'm not noble. I'd cut up all over the place if you ever so much as looked at another woman. Well, then how do you think I felt when I walked in here this afternoon? That was different. I was trying an experiment. That's not us, silly. That's ring three. I hate it when your jaw gets all tight like that. Not still upset about Jerry. I suppose I must forget it like that. I'd be pretty griped if you did. All in all, it's given me a dizzy headache. Too much sizzling. I wish Mama were here. When are you going to start some real work on this marriage of ours? Grow up and be a big girl. Is it too much to ask for everything to be just as it is now, always? Yes, darling, it's too much to ask. Life won't give it to you. How'd we get on this subject anyway? Oh, kiss me and hold me tight. Where'd you get that perfume? Thirty dollars a bottle, Julia. Don't you like it? You smell like a little whatnot. She brought me the negligee, too. Well, she can take that back. Oh, heavens. Speaking of Julia, Darushka... What's the matter? Nothing, except I forgot to tell you something. Can you stand a surprise? A <laughs> lady living with you, I've had plenty of practice. What now? Nothing, except I made us $12,000 today. Oh, only $12,000? I sold the farm. We have to move out right away. Do you mind? Not at all. This afternoon? David! You don't believe me. I did. Darushka the singer bought the farm this afternoon for $30,000 right after lunch. Just like that. That's $12,000 profit. Don't shake me off like a bag of flour. Well, people don't come for lunch and buy a farm. But Darushka isn't people. She's an artist and a Russian, too. Well, where do we go from here? Oh, that's simple. We can go to a hotel for a week or two, and then we can find an apartment. I see. I thought you loved it here. Oh, I did. I do. But aren't we a little young to bury ourselves way out here in the country? I didn't think it was being buried. Well, that's because you're in town all day. But up until Fritz and Bertha's coming, I just sat up here having help trouble. You should have told me, dear. Unless two people want the same thing, it's no go, and all the pretending in the world won't make it go. But I really have adored it, David. Why don't you tell me the truth, dear? Oh, I have. No, you haven't. You've given me every reason but the real one. You want to be near your mother, is that it? Why can't I make you understand? Will you never learn a lesson? First you thought I had no appeal, and look what I did to a perfectly strange man. You thought I couldn't balance a checkbook, and I've made you almost 100% profit on a property investment. The trouble with you is you don't appreciate me. That's the whole thing in a nutshell. Nutshell is right.
skyscraper. Thanks. Aren't you pleased? Mm -hmm. What are you looking like that for? What could be worrying you? Your hair and my income tax. We can't afford an income tax with all our other expenses. No? Well, it's got to be paid. I forbid it. Oh, oh, that's fine. All I have to do is write to the government. Dear Mr. Morgenthau, I'm very sorry, but my wife won't let me pay my tax. I just marvel how grown men can be so scared of a little tax. Mm. Why don't you just ignore the whole situation for once and see what happens? The trouble with you is you don't appreciate me. What are you mumbling about? I was just remarking to myself that the trouble with you was that you didn't appreciate me. Mm. But, David, we just can't wave away $12,000. It isn't sensible. No, I suppose not. Don't you think we ought to be sensible? Oh, sure. It'll pay for our income tax for as long as we live. Isn't that something? You bet. Only, you're not happy about it. Well, I just have to get used to the idea of being a millionaire. You're disappointed in me. You love me, but you don't like me. Well. Who's well? God's well. 
Sounds sacrilegious the way you say it. Well, I don't mean it to be sacrilegious. Yes, well, he does wonderful things for a person, really. Well, who said he didn't? Nobody, except I don't think we're grateful enough. No? With the proper management, I can be a grandmother at 40. All right. When are you going to start? Now. What are you talking about? Can't you put one and one together? You're out of your head. I bet you 20 cents. Well, it's impossible. Oh, darling. Aren't you happy about it? Don't you want a baby? Not now. Why, David? You're too young. Oh, darling, don't feel that way about it. I'm old. Inside of me, I'm old. As if I've lived before. Sometimes I think that's true. It's going to be all right. Let it happen when it wants to. There's quite a little wisdom in that. Oh, you must be as happy about it as I am. Remember what you said before about two people having to want the same thing or it's no go? No, I want it. Of course I do. But listen, in words of one syllable, why didn't you tell me you were going to have this child before I went upstairs? In words of one syllable, I did not know I was going to have twins before you went upstairs. Well, but it all happened while I was taking my bath. Yes. What happened? I was dizzy. <laughs> I'm dizzy, too, but that doesn't mean I'm going to have a baby. This was a special kind of dizziness. Bertha said so. Bertha said so? And you're going to take her word for it, you crazy cluck? But I know it's true. All right, let's run down to Steelbrook. Oh, careful. Oh, I'm sorry. Let's see if we can find Dr. Holden and make sure. I have feelings for the things they're so. I think I must have felt it first when I sold the farm to Darushka. Oh, yes, farm. Look, dear, doesn't the thought of having children make you want to keep the farm? Oh, I know. Milk fresh from the cow and eggs a minute old and all that sort of thing. But just think how much more we're going to need the extra money now. But money isn't everything. We've got enough to scrape through on. I still don't want to sell it to you. Now less than ever. And with me, it's more than ever. It's not so good. But it's natural for a girl to want to be near her mother when she's having her first baby, isn't it? Tell me if it isn't, David, please. Yes, I guess it is, darling. Quite natural and normal. I'm glad. I love you, David. Get your coat on and we'll drive down in the sunset. Shall I change my dress? If you like. I promised Mama we'd call her back. Call her later when we know for sure. upstairs changing her dress. Yes, it's okay. Go ahead, dear. But look, if uh, I start talking about something else all of a sudden, you'll know she's coming down. Yeah. Well, what do you say? Well, that was giving it to you kind of straight, wasn't it? Look, I'm coming in. Why? Yes, I know you're all right, but I'd like to come in anyway. We'll, we'll have a bite of dinner together. No, she won't suspect anything. I'll tell her that I have to go in to see a client. No, she won't. All right, then. Look, uh, I'll tell you what. You lie down and rest a while, and you can catch the... Uh, you can catch the 610 out here. Because I say so. This is no time for you to be alone. I understand, Mother, but she won't have to know anything about it until you want her to know it. Listen, you come out here, I'm coming in there, that's final. Well, if it's too much for you after a rotten day, I... Well, Mrs. Brown, 
I take my hat off to you. That's all I can say. I hope when my time comes, I can take it like that. What? Baloney yourself. No, we'll meet you. Oh, of course I won't tell her. Not a word. Sure, I can carry it off. Don't worry. So long, Mother. Norton is not coming in? Well, she doesn't feel very well. She just wants a breath of air. Okay. I'd leave her alone, Bertha. Oh, we went to the doctor. It's true about the baby. Yeah. And everything yeah, everything's is... Everything's fine. Oh, Mrs. Brown is upstairs. I, I wanted so much to tell her. Upstairs? Yes, she caught the early train. Was she all right? Oh, yes. She had no lunch, so we made her eat something. Oh, good. Oh, Bertha. so different than I imagined it was going to be. I don't even want a baby now. Yes, you do. Everything's changed just in a few short hours. Everything is always changing. Then there isn't anything in life you can be certain of. Nothing but uncertainty. Maybe I'll die before Mama. Now, that's a nice, unselfish thought to wish on the poor woman. It's what you said. All right, I might die before either of you. we all be destroyed by a hurricane or flood. You're trying to tell me that losing your mother isn't really very important against all the other dreadful things that are happening in the world. No, I'm not, because it is important. Birth and death, that's the whole cycle of life. Whatever happens beyond that cycle is just so much embroidery. A lot of embroidery in the world today, I'll admit, but... 
you can take this, darling, you can take anything. I can't take it. I won't take it. It isn't right for her to die. Who's running this universe? I don't know. Hey, wait a minute. You've been given a home, a husband, a baby. Nothing. And no one really belongs to anyone. If you've learned that, my darling, you've learned a lot. Then what's the sense of pouring your heart and soul out in what you don't possess and never can possess? Because a loan carries a greater obligation than a gift. I'll lend you a baby and take back your mother, is that it? Something like that? No, thank you. I don't want children on those terms. Oh, there's so much pain inside of me. Then make friends with it, darling. It'll stop hurting you. Make friends with pain. As if a person could. Your mother has all these weeks, and it's made her strong and quiet inside. Oh, look, darling, why don't you cry? I can't. I won't call you softy. Let go. Please let go. I can't. There aren't any tears in me. I just don't want to go on living. Shh. Shame on you. Doesn't life scare you at all? No, it scares the wits out of me. Oh. Oh, Damon, I'm gonna miss her so. <laughs> It's almost time to go to the station to meet Mama. She's already here. Dear. She caught the train ahead. <sighs> She'll know I've been crying. Here's my handkerchief. Blow. A person's got to hold it themselves to blow. <sighs> Do my eyes look as if I've been crying? Are you going upstairs? I've got to go. Not a word that you know anything. I promise. Oh, 
What's got into this child, David? I'm just happy. And don't you dare let on why, David. Well, if you think I'm going to get down on my knees and beg you to tell me, you're mistaken. I'm not interested. You see, she's not interested. Then we don't tell her. Naturally, we don't tell her. She's not interested? Why should we? All she wants to do is go gallivanting off on a trip and leave us here with her grandchildren. <laughs> Market's up a couple of points. That's good. We'll need the money. With twins, you bet. Jabber, jabber, jabber. Don't you two ever get tired jabbering? Well, why don't you go upstairs if we bother you? Oh, well, there's no need to burn more good oil if you're in such reduced circumstances. Oh, David, did Dr. Holden say charge the same price for twins? You can have up to five. Now, that's nice talk. Did you say something, Mrs. Brown? Who is Dr. Holden? Oh, he's our little doctor in the village. How old is a baby before it gets its first teeth? Well, I'm sure yours and David's will be born with a full upper and lower. Speaking of coming events, that reminds me, my knitting. I must get finished. I'll get it for you. Well, I'm not an invalid. I can walk. No, you will not. Oh, David, but, remember, if she should happen to ask you any more personal questions, don't answer her, because she's not interested. Steady. What is this? I'm all right. I just got to see. Dizzy? That it's true to... That's why she was acting so strangely. Then you really did go to the doctor. Well, she didn't want you to know until we were sure. And she's all right? Yes, yeah, she's all right. Oh, that's... Oh, it'd be so hard to tell her now. I'm a coward, David. When it comes to Claudia, I think you are at that. You haven't got the insights to let her do her own suffering. Well, she's not disciplined to pain. Life's been gentle with her up to now. And you want to go on taking the hard knocks and leave her the easy ones. Well, wouldn't you? Sure, but I know I don't have to. She'll face life on its own terms. She wouldn't be your daughter if she didn't. I'm not as noble as you think, David. Who the heck wants nobility? I'd love to stay on a few years longer, especially now when the baby's coming. We'd love to have you. It's strange, isn't it? Please don't tell her tonight. I uh, may not tell her at all. If we could only spare her, David. That's why I want to go away. None of that monkey business. You're going to stay here. I'd rather die. <laughs> Settled. Where are you going? I, uh, my pipe scrape. Did you know they have a son? 
He was here when I came in this evening. Bertha and Fritz seemed upset at my finding him here. You know, something seemed a little wrong there. Well, that's very interesting, Mrs. Sherlock Holmes. She told me they had a son. There's something going on there. We've sensed it, haven't we? Hmm, it's no crime to have a son. He's been in prison. Hmm? Just out. Yes, Fritz doesn't want him around, and Bertha doesn't know what to do about him. Poor soul, I felt so sorry for her. I said you'd give him a job here. Here? Why not? On the farm. The burglar, remember? Yes, yeah, she said you'd shot at him. He did not shoot at him. He shot into the air just to frighten him, didn't you, David? He was making off with your egg money. <laughs> I don't think he's quite the type to have around here, Mother. Hmm. We'll need Bertha now. But, David, if he's a thief... When you were a little girl, you stole a dollar right out of my pocketbook, big as life. Did I put you in prison? No. I just tried to show you that nice little girls didn't steal. Well, this nice little girl still steals. I can't keep any change in my pants pockets. Now, what I'm trying to say... I know what you're trying to say. You're a marvelous old duck, Mrs. Brown. Duck? Allow me to tweak your nose. Oh, if you don't stop mauling me. And if it's the extra salary you're thinking of, you don't need to worry about money. <laughs> She's going to leave us a million dollars, David. How did you guess it? Well, that's why we're so good to you, to keep on the right side of you. I wouldn't put it past you. Well, I'm going in and tell them it's all right. David will. But we haven't decided. I'll trust Mother's instincts. But that means you have to stay down here now and guard the place. Well, leave it to me. They both love you, and they're very embarrassed. Now, let me do something useful around here. You're a glutton for punishment, aren't you? Once you get going, you can say anything. It's a glorious thing you're doing for her, darling, but I wish you'd both grow up. I wish you had the strength to take her in your arms and say, look, let's not go on pretending. I know. Let's face it. I wish I could do that, David. It would release her completely. We don't say things to each other in words. I don't think you'll have to say them in words. That's not your system. Another huddle? Well, we're huddlers. That's what makes us interesting. Oh, I'm glad to know you're interesting. Oh, is she interesting? I came home this afternoon and found your daughter in the arms of a British Englishman. Oh, what fun. Has he a friend? Well, we could make inquiries. Oh. Oh, David. <laughs> no, no, cut it out. Stop it. Stop oh, it. Mama, please. The door. What? Somebody at the door. What could it be? Well, why don't you find out? It might be the British. All right, I will. All right, all right. Oh, I've only got a minute. I thought you went faster. Well, I came back. Why? One thing to tell you not to sell the house. Hello, Hello Mrs. Julia. Brown. Nice to see Hello, you, Julia. David. Who's selling what house? Just don't do it, that's all. And you came all the way back just to tell us that. You've got the biggest bump of curiosity I ever saw. You're telling me. Why did you come back, Julia? You might as well tell them, Julia. They'll nag the life out of you until they find out. Besides, I'd like to know myself. I just changed my plans, that's all. I called Hartley on the telephone. He's meeting me at New Haven in an hour. Mm. Sounds exciting. It is, rather. We're going away for a few days. A sort of, uh, spontaneous honeymoon. Now, tell me, what are you going to do about selling the farm? I feel responsible. Would it hurt you to tell your old mother what this is all about, selling the farm? Well, next thing I hear, it'll be true about David coming home and finding you in the arms of another man. Well... You see, Julia doesn't think I have enough with what to have a secret friend. Oh, but she has. You should have seen me this afternoon, Mrs. Brown, in some of Julia's finery. Well, I see you're back to normal now. David didn't like the way we fixed you up? I certainly did. She looked like a million dollars. A million, million dollars. You told me I look like a little whatnot. Can I help it if you don't recognize a compliment when you hear one? Oh, we've got a horrid <laughs> habit with noses. Do you know it? <laughs> Hartley used to do that to me. It seems to run in the family. Wasn't Hartley a bit grumpy at the concert? He's been working very hard. I'm afraid I was the grumpy one. But it's never too late to learn. Orange juice. Orange juice? Why orange juice? It looks healthy. It's special for you, for the baby. What baby? It has an egg in it. Well, an egg isn't poison. Drink it down. Drink it down. You're the father, you drink half. I don't need it. Doesn't anyone tell me anything? Oh, no, they don't tell things in this household. Well, I wanted it to be a surprise until the baby was here. Yes, I was like that with you. Did I surprise you, Mama? Yes. Yeah. 
yes, you did. <laughs> I can certainly believe you, Mrs. Brown. I think it's wonderful you look so well. Being a prospective grandmother certainly agrees with you. She does look marvelous, doesn't she? So relaxed and happy. Happy? You're the happiest people I know, and I envy you. Don't ever envy anyone, Julia. Just make the most of every moment while you can. That's about it, Julia. Well, I must run along. Goodbye, Mrs. Brown. Goodbye, David. So long, Julia. I'll take you to the door. So long, Mrs. Norton. 